Well, we did a lot of good things, and you know, you look at it. I, you know, you can't get caught up in statistics, but statistically, it was a dead heat. You know, offense, defense, special teams, uh, very comparable in every statistical category. What we didn't do well is um, take care of the ball and made a mistake, a costly mistake on special teams, and that's something we uh, we pride ourselves on. The other thing, you know, as a coach, you look and want to be able to start faster. You know, as good a defensive football game as we played, you know, our worst series was the first one. We let them go, you know, 80 on us and, and get up, and uh, right away you're spotting them. You feel like you got to press a little bit, come from behind, and, you know, fought like crazy to get some momentum back at 7-6 and then give up the long touchdown run. So the way we start has to change, and then, you know, just the, uh, the little things, take care of the football. You know, and, and um, do a better job on special teams. Was it a week of progress from week one to week two? Oh, there's no no doubt we were a better football team in week two. Um, we still have a long way to go, uh, but our players are committed, coaches are committed, and we're going to keep moving forward. We knew knew this was a tough stretch entering the season. You know, the schedule just worked out that way. You start with Miami, um, got South Florida on the horizon. In between there, you you pinch in the the, the team that's probably favored, you know, in the Eastern Division in our conference. So it wasn't an easy road for us, but, you know, you can't worry about that. You just got to go one game at a time. What have you seen from South Florida in their first two games, and is there any comparable carryovers from Taggart's tenure at Western Kentucky to South Florida already? A little bit. Um, I guess if you look at our game defensively, um, you know, there's a little bit of carryover what he's doing offensively, but um, but we're a different team too. We have a little bit different approach schematically, um, and probably more defense available to us to play those big sets that he likes to run. Um, you know, I think week two for them was the type of game they wanted to play. I, I thought they were right there with Michigan State, deep into the ball game. Um, they're executing, playing very well defensively. They're, they're a very good defensive football team. Offensively, they're, they were picking up chunks of yards and but hurt themselves at times. You know, they, they had some big plays in that game that got called back uh, a couple times. And, and um, But I do think, obviously, they showed great improvement week one to week two, and they're a talented football team. Carl, are you, are you still comfortable with the way that the quarterbacks are going? Um, it just seems like it was a little Well, everybody wants to talk about quarterback play, um, and yet, you know, we look at it differently. Um, there were times when I thought our receivers uh, let us down assignment-wise, maybe not running. Here, here's what, you, when you start slow, I think there's a certain level of frustration, and I think people leave the coaching. And some of the mistakes were on the quarterbacks, but some weren't. Some were on the receivers, the depth of their routes, um, things like that. I thought as the game went on, especially, we became a little bit lax in the discipline of our execution. Um, you know, I also think we have a young, inexperienced offensive line, and and got a number of new starters there. And it's nice bringing along a, a fresh new quarterback when you've got great experience up front. When you're inexperienced up front and a quarterback, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough chore. Those guys have to grow up quickly. So I think there was improvement all over the offense. I just think the consistency needs to get there. Um, we can't have the individual breakdowns. And, you know, everybody wants to talk about quarterback play. And yet, I look at it a lot more deeply than that. I think it's a team, and, and there's mistakes happening. Um, there's mistakes happening at all 11 positions, in which I think the tendency sometimes is to say, "Oh, it's rotating the quarterbacks. We're not in a rhythm." But that's not always the case. It's you know, uh, the quarterback may be the one taking the blame for it when there's other guys who aren't doing their responsibility. Is that why? Because of that? Is that what, are they running too much for your likeness? No, I don't. Heck, you know, but that's who he is. And and I know that's who Quez is. That's who he wants to be. And when he runs the ball, he's going to be a physical runner. He's going to take a lot of shots, and um, that's okay. He's a big, strong guy. He can handle it. 
Um, Greg is a little bit different, you know, style of runner, more of an elusive guy. He's not going to take the hits, and that's fine with me too, you know, and they both got their running styles. But certainly we recruited them to be able to run the ball at times when, when they needed to, um, and it's helped us at times. So. How did the offensive line grade out? Was it, you mentioned progress, but was it as much progress as you would have liked to have seen from week one to week two? Um, probably not. Um, and I, it's, you got to be careful when you talk about grades because a guy can grade well and still have made a number of mistakes. I, I thought the mistakes we make are gla were glaring, and, and it's not about the grade over the game as much as it's the inconsistency of play. And, um, and it's, you know, specific one guy breaking down or another guy breaking down at times that hurts all five, where four might be on the right page and one isn't. And it looks like, you know, they're not doing a job as a unit. And yet, um, but we can definitely get better. And then there's things that, that we can improve on up front there and, um, you know, make our offense more competitive. Well, I think you fix it by coaching. Um, you know, ultimately, I think you, you just you can't, especially with all the new opponents we're facing. You, you just can't hit it all. You have to have, you know, you have both games you get into. You get different looks than you're expecting. Your guys have to be able to adjust on the fly. I think you can prepare them and coach them to adjust on the fly. Um, be more more rules oriented and less man oriented. Um, but ultimately, no matter how well you prepare them, they're going to see things on Saturday that you weren't able to show them during the week. And you, you got to be able to make the adjustments on the fly. Heck, it might get you once even, but you got to make the adjustments on the sideline and, and be able to, um, you know, implement those changes on the field. And I thought at times, at times, rather than, you know, that we might make a mistake and then fix it on the sidelines and then still make that mistake again. Those are the ones that are frustrating to me where you, you can't be mistake repeaters. You know, if you see something new and it gets you once, fine, make the adjustment, expect it next time and, and execute better the next time. And, and that's, yeah, there's, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys with not very much game experience and I think they'll only get better as a, as an offensive line as we go through the season. You, you, you mentioned the receivers, but they do have some More disappointed because of that, or is it something they're still are they still growing into that? Into that yeah, into I mean, the we have experience there, um, and yet, you know, yeah, I think ultimately, I think what happens, and it's happened, it's it's not unique to this group of receivers. Is um, you know, you struggle a little bit early on in the game, and and they start to press, and suddenly they're 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 trying too hard to get open instead of running the route as it's coached to be run, and. You know, the, the passing game is so much timing involved that at times, you know, that can affect <clears throat> your throwing game, even though it's not clearly evident as a fan or, or an observer of the football game. And I think that happens at times. I think, I think they, I, I don't know, I don't want to say mistakes as much as I think they're pressing at times when they really don't need to. They just go out there, relax, run their routes on the correct rhythm, and, and, and things will be fine. Defense played well. I think they're they're growing. I think they still have a lot of improvement to make. And I, and I think, um, you know, once they sat through the film session, they understand that. Yeah, sure, they played well. They played okay, probably well enough to to win that game. And um, and yet, they can be a lot better as well. Um, so there's improvement to be made on that side of the football as well. All over the team, you know, we can get better. Um, you know, and we're going to work hard to do that. Did you like the way that the quarterbacks played when they had a couple series in a row, the second half, when you almost alternated by quarters as opposed to by series? Did you prefer that to how they did it in the first half? Well, I, you could say that, I guess, at times. But, but also, I always have to tempt that and remember that the pressure was off by that point. 
you know, it become it became a comeback game. And a lot of times you see that on Saturdays. And what I think we have to learn to execute. I don't know. I, I'm not going to say, well, it's because our quarterbacks were left in for a few series or because they weren't. I thought as a team, when the pressure was off offensively, we relaxed a little bit and just played. And I think, it, I think we're just we're tight as an offense right now. I can see it. We're 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 starting the game tight. We're pressing. We're we're not relaxing and we're not letting ourselves just go play. And you know, that's going to be a big point of our point of emphasis for us this week is is go out, play hard, and have some fun and play loose though. You know, don't play tight. I think. That tends to happen with young groups, you know, that haven't played together. And you know, as coaches, we got to do a better job of, of uh, getting them just to go out and let it hang out and have some fun and play ball. So the expectation should be that what is it that Greg will rotate on a series by series basis? No, to start no. I mean, we reevaluate every week. You know, right now, you know, I, I, Brian and I talked a little bit yesterday. We'll talk a little bit more today, and we'll see how this week goes. But. Um, you know, I'm not going to lock myself into any any prediction as far as how we're going to handle that this week, but we are going to make the decision that we feel is best for the football team. Defense, are you pleasantly surprised with the way they're playing? Or are, they, they seem to be, are they significantly better than last year? How about that? Pleasantly, I'm not surprised. I expected a lot from our defense this year. I still think we could be we can be more consistent defensively. I, I think at times we are pretty darn good. And at times we let our own mistakes hurt us. And so um, I think we can keep getting better. But not pleasantly surprised. I expected that kind of improvement from what I saw in the spring, what I saw in the summer. What are they doing better? Um, well, I think we understand the system better. And I think that tends to create a certain amount of confidence. So I think. Ultimately, when you see that, then you see guys playing faster, um, which I think we certainly are, just because you're more sure of yourself. Um, and the times when, when we're not playing faster, those are the times I want to eliminate that because I, I think we should know. We should know the scheme inside and out now, and it should lend to that style of kind of loosey-goosey, get-after-it, fast kind of play every snap, which is what I want to see. Well, we didn't win, so they didn't play well enough to win. And that's something I, I learned early in my career. You know, Coach Snyder always said it. A good defensive football game can be holding them to 40 when you score 41. And if you only score 14, you better hold them to 13. You know, that's defensive football. That's what it is week in and week out. So, um, you know, I want to get too much into well enough to win. Well enough to win is winning, you know. And, um, again, you know, I, I thought the defense played really well at times. I don't want... I don't ever want to start the game like we did. I thought our worst series was our first series, and we've got to we've got to figure out a way to start faster defensively and not spot them seven and, and feel like pressed to come back. You know. Is it a good thing to be playing a team that's struggling offensively, or is that you know, um, it's all for me. You know, you can read so much into who you're playing and who they played and what their scores were. It's to me. It's all about matchups, and every week is a different matchup. And I think for us, um, defensively, we're a faster team. We're not a big, physical football team with a huge defensive line. And so, you, you match up against a team like South Florida and look at their size up front and their talent up front, and you know it's a different matchup than than who you played in, in East Carolina. And so. The whole equation changes. So everybody wants to kind of compare scores and look at who they played and what they've done. And yet, for me, each matchup is a different chemistry experiment. You know, and see, and I would, I would say, you know, that I don't know, better or worse, we'll find out on Saturday. But, but I, it's a different matchup. You know, East Carolina spread-oriented offense is something that that we've kind of, you know coming out of the Sun Belt that we had kind of designed our defense to defend the spread, you know, and um, you don't play teams with this approach but once or twice a year, 
you know. And so, um, good thing for us is we had the Miami game. And a Miami, what Miami does offensively is similar to what South Florida does, at least in terms of their packages. And so, that was good for us. That was good for us um, to grow as a defense and to get better in our base packages and our bigger packages. And that will help us against South Florida. Last year, you know, I felt like when we entered that North Texas game a year ago, it was the first time we saw that offense. And we hadn't seen it in the spring or camp or early in the season. All of a sudden, we were faced with playing that style of offense. Here it was different. We prepared for it in the spring. We prepared for it the first few days of summer camp. Um, and then we saw it in the first game. So I feel like we're much ahead of the game in terms of our game plan for a team like South Florida. I think the team you saw against Michigan State was more what they're capable of. And you really looked at their McNeese game. It was the first game under a new coach. They made some uncharacteristic mistakes. One thing you know about a Coach Tiger team is they're going to be well coached. They're not going to hurt themselves. They did in that first game, which is not characteristic of a team that he coaches. So, um, you know, gave up a bunch of big plays. And, and there were just some glaring errors that they had made. And, you could tell they really buckled down and coached them hard before the second game. And so, you know, I look at that team, they fielded against Michigan State, and I, that's the team that they are. And I think that they expected to be coming into this season. In a game where both teams need to get off the schneid a little bit, what is your sense of the early game emotions and how do you temper those? Well, <clears throat> you know, I. I my message to our players is it's not about the early game emotions. It's about the early game execution. And, um, you know, it's going to be a physical football game. And it's going to be a game that is probably going to go four quarters. And, and I think we've got to prepare ourselves to do that. Um, but for, a, you know, playing a team, a physical running team like South Florida that plays good defense and good special teams, you look at that kind of team and, and you can't get down to them because that's what, you know, that's what they'll rely on is taking a lead and then just grinding it out, you know, and, and um, you know, as a football team defensively, offensively, you know, we've got to start fast and not hurt ourselves in a game like this and um, execute on both sides of the ball and, and await opportunities to make plays. Is there a lot of the same mantras that you were repeating mid-season last year? Is it frustrating to you that this is still the message that needs to sink in with a lot of these guys who have been with you for two years? No. I, no, because it doesn't happen overnight. And and I, I know that. I mean, um, it's hard to change habits, and it's hard to change culture. And... But I do believe, you know, I, I, there is no doubt in my mind that we have grown as a football team. And we are a better football team now than we were at any point a year ago. Um, I also knew that our schedule was front loaded. And, and I, you know, you wait for that improvement to manifest itself. But, um, you know, but there's no doubt we're, I have no doubt that we're moving in the right direction and we're improving as a football team.